Greetings, do-it-yourselfers. So I've got kind of a weird one today. We're going to do a vibration diagnosis, but um, it's kind of an interesting vibration uh, background story here that is important in helping to come up with the diagnosis. And then also there's gonna be a kind of little interesting battle where I will go up against thousands of parts changers too. So pay attention here to these symptoms and the repair history so that we can narrow this down. This is a 2003 Volkswagen Jetta with four cylinder engine. It has a five speed manual transmission. The car was brought in to a aftermarket um, shop for a replacement of the clutch and also they found that it had um, CV boot damage. So they also replaced the drive axles, the front uh, right and left axle shafts. And after the clutch and axle shaft replacement, the owner notices that there is a somewhat intermittent vibration that happens generally at higher speeds. And I've actually test driven the vehicle and I've narrowed down the vibration is not intermittent. It's actually very, very consistent. But what happens is owner brings the car back to the shop, says, hey, got this vibration problem. Shop checks it out. They determine that it's certainly nothing that they did, um, but uh, agrees that maybe because this occurred after their repairs and everything and they can't find anything wrong, they agree if the owner takes it to a Volkswagen dealer and gets a diagnosis done and the diagnosis shows that it was something that the shop did that caused this problem, they will pay the diagnostic fee and work with the owner on making the repair. Owner takes the car to Volkswagen dealer and without even having to look at it, Volkswagen dealer has a diagnosis. Very simple. It is a known problem that with aftermarket axle shafts, there will be a driveline vibration or shutter. And that is the problem. So instead of the $200 axle shafts that the shop installed, the owner will need to get like five or $600 OEM Volkswagen genuine part axle shafts and that will fix the problem. Well, of course, uh, shop adamantly denies that that's the issue um, because they do this all the time and they don't have vibration problems with their axle shafts. So while they agree that some aftermarket axle shafts may cause the problem, it's not the axle shaft, it's not the clutch. Um, so owner's kind of stuck now. So what I am going to do is act as a neutral third party and diagnose whether it is something with maybe the clutch, something with the axle shafts, maybe something unrelated to that. Here are the symptoms now that I've test driven the car. Um, the vibration only happens at 3,800 to 4,000 RPM. It does not matter the vehicle speed. It does not matter what gear you are in. The vibration disappears as soon as you push the clutch pedal in. When the clutch pedal is released, even if you maintain the speed, even if you maintain the engine RPM, the vibration is gone. But release the clutch pedal, clutch is engaged. If you are at 3,800 to 4,000 RPM, the vibration will be there. And it is, it is definitely a noticeable vibration. Anything under 3,800 RPM, there is nothing there. Anything over 4,000 RPM, it goes away. If you have the car at park in neutral and rev the engine up, you will not get the vibration. You have to have the car moving. Um, if it's in first gear and you're at 3,800 RPM, say at like, I don't know what, 24, 25 miles, it is the same vibration that you would get if you are at 80 miles an hour in fifth gear at 3,800 RPM. So it is not speed related, it is RPM related. That tells me that I don't think it's gonna be the axle shafts because if the axle shaft is out of balance or something, then it doesn't care what RPM you're at it also wouldn't care if the clutch is engaged or not. If you have the vibration and the axle shaft is causing it, if you push in the clutch, the axle shaft is still spinning at the same speed, it would still vibrate, but that is not what happens. So I'm thinking it's not the axle shafts, but of course, uh, we're going to be neutral about it and I'm gonna come up with a method where we will be able to diagnose uh, whether it is axle shaft or not. Now, here's another complicating matter, and that is, of course, with the Volkswagen dealer's statement on the axle shaft being the problem and this being a known issue, the first thing I did was I did some research. And 
absolutely invariably, if you look at the forums and chat rooms, which you know that I hate because it's all a bunch of people who have never turned a wrench before, but they give you all kinds of advice, invariably, this is actually a fairly common problem, it seems, and the solution is to get OEM axle shafts according to thousands of the parts changers at the websites and forums and chat rooms and things like that. Um, of course, that would go against with my theory. So this will be somewhat like the battle at Thermopylae with uh, the 300 Spartans versus the 7,000 Persians in that myself, all by myself, armed only with logic and reasoning, I will go against the 10,000 parts changers that say you need to change the axles and that will fix it. So who will be right? Well, spoiler alert, I will, because even if it does turn out to be the axle shafts, through logic and reason, we are going to find 100% for certain that it's the axle shafts and not appeal to argumentum ad numerum, which is the argument that if 10,000 people say that's what it is, then that's gotta be it. That's not the way that I think. So. What we need is a method where I can sort of reproduce this problem and still be able to diagnose what the issue is. And that's gonna be very hard to do while the car is moving. So what my idea is, I'm going to go ahead and put this car up on jack stands and then drive the car while it's on the jack stand, see if I can duplicate the problem. If I can, then I am going to one by one remove parts from the drive line until either the vibration goes away, in which case I'll know the last part that I removed was responsible for the vibration, or if I remove all drive line components and the vibration does not go away, I've got to think they did something when they installed the clutch. So that is going to be my strategy. Let's go ahead and see how that works. You know what just occurred to me? Um, my analogy with the battle at Thermopylae with the 300 Spartans versus the 7,000 Persians, um, the Spartans actually lost that battle. All right, we're in the car here. We're on the jack stand, so uh, I've got the engine running. And what we're gonna do is first, of course, uh, duplicate that this is only a driveline kind of related issue. So I'm gonna go ahead and just in neutral, get up to 38, 4,000, and there's no vibration, none whatsoever. Feels perfectly fine. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put it into gear and uh, double check that this is um, safe on the jack stands, of course. Uh, I don't wanna drive it through my house or anything. And this right here is just to verify that both axles are turning. Previously was the right side, this is the left side. And with it free spinning, and actually our ABS light just went on um, on the speedometer there because of course we're free spinning here. So let's bring it up. And there's definitely a vibration there. I don't know if you can hear it. All right, let's go to second gear. Nothing. There it is. Yeah, definitely feel it. Let's go to third. Yeah, definitely there. And if I push the clutch pedal in, it goes away immediately. Even if I hold the RPM, the vibration, there it is. Push the clutch pedal in. There's the vibration. There's the vibration. Push the pedal in, it goes away. So every time I push the clutch pedal in, let's also try doing this. Let's get it up, get that vibration going and then just slip it into neutral and the vibration goes away. And then put it back into gear and there's the vibration. Okay, so we've duplicated the problem. So let's look at what we're gonna do next. All right, so now I've got a platform on which I can do some experiments and see if we can get that vibration to go away. So, of course, uh, we want to use our null hypothesis approach as always, and that is to come up with all possibilities that could explain this and then narrow down everything except 
for what our idea, our hypothesis is, and then everything we eliminate is evidence towards what our hypothesis was, especially in this case, since I'm not exactly going to go ahead and pull a transmission and inspect the clutch as my first step. I wanna do simpler things first. So one of the things that could cause any kind of driving vibration problem or something like that could of course be any issue with an imbalanced wheel, um, tire imperfection, something like that. So let's go ahead and we're going to remove the wheels from both sides of the vehicle. If the vibration goes away, pretty good evidence that that's the issue. If the vibration is still there, then we can eliminate wheels and tires as the issue. You know, one thing I do hate about these models, they use these bolts instead of nuts for the lugs, making it all the more pleasurable to install the wheel again. I honestly do not know why they would do this to me. And obviously anytime you remove the wheels, a uh, good time to check the tires for any uneven wear, or metal or things stuck in it that could cause a flat or something. So. I always like to check that when I remove the tires, but uh, both tires and wheels are removed from the car. So let's go ahead and repeat our test and see if the vibration is still there. All right, now one of the things we are also gonna wanna do in this test is look for, you know, if, if any kind of rotor imbalance or rotor warp is going here. And now that I've removed those nuts, you see, of course, the, the rotors actually spin independent of the axle. So what I'm gonna have to do is feed in a couple of these bolts to make sure that the rotor is locked onto the axle so that the rotor does spin with the axle and uh, contribute to any vibration problem if the rotors are responsible. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on both sides. All right, and I actually found that without the wheel in place, uh, the bolts will not set flush with the rotor to lock it into place. So I am going to have to use uh, some type of washers here to ensure that the bolts will um, securely hold the rotors in place. So um, each one of these uh, is going to get a washer on it to kind of fill in for the space that's missing since the wheel is gone. All right, there we go. And uh, I've got all five of the lugs installed because again, I wanna maintain balance. So again, we, we don't wanna overlook anything and be stupid in our diagnostic process and cause a vibration where there isn't one. So I wanna make sure everything's balanced and it is now. So let me do this on the other side and we'll try again. All right, let's go ahead and try this again and get up to that 3,800 RPM. See, we got a wheel speed warning light now. Oops, a little bit too much there. And uh, it is still there. Okay. It's, it's just a lot less without the wheels in place. But there is still a little vibration there. Let's try it in second. Yeah, there's still... I definitely feel it. And then it goes away, push the clutch in, it goes away, put the clutch back. And let's get, and it definitely vibrates. So we still have the vibration issue. It's definitely less without the load of the wheels on it, but um, let's go ahead and go to another. So what I'm gonna do now is remove the rotors from each side. Again, any kind of imbalance in the rotors or something like that, as unlikely as that is, but we're being scientific here. Um, so I've got the brake caliper um, tucked well, well out of the way of the uh, drive shaft so that I don't do any damage and make sure that it's held securely so that if we still have the vibration, which we will, uh, it doesn't drop and break the hose. So you wanna be really careful here. So let's continue with our diagnosis and see if we still have the vibration even with the rotors removed on both sides. All right. And boy, it definitely without any weight at all on the drive line, it's, it's very easy to over rev here now. And let's go to higher gear here. Oh yeah, there's still a vibration there. Let's see. Right there, definitely vibration. And then it goes away if I push in the clutch or if I reduce or increase RPM. 
yeah, you can definitely feel just not nearly as much, not nearly as much, but it's definitely specific to that RPM range. Right there. All right, we still have vibration. All right, so our next and actually it will be final step is going to be to remove the axles on both sides. And um, of course, you know, we could do this one side at a time, but I'm, I'm of course trying to maintain balance here, uh, which I think is gonna be critical to diagnosing this. So we're, we're gonna do everything in pairs. Um, and, and of course, if we find that the axle is the problem, we're gonna replace both axles anyway. Um, one of the things that I'm kind of a little bit worried about now is, is definitely I've noticed that the vibration is decreased the less load that there is on the system. So for example, when the wheels, when you're driving the car, it's unmistakable. You can actually hear it um, vibrating the car. When the car was up on jack stands and I just go ahead and freewheel the wheel and tires, then the vibration is definitely there, but it's certainly less. It's, it's definitely less. And then with removing the wheels and tires, and especially with the rotors, the vibration is considerably reduced, but it is still there at that specific RPM range. So one of the things I'm a little worried about is if the um, vibration completely disappears with removal of the drive axles, well, is that because there's just no load um, anymore and the drive axles were actually the issue, uh, or is it the clutch? So. Um, I'm hoping, well actually I'm not hoping, I'm not hoping that I feel a vibration with the clutch because that would be a major repair if the clutch is the issue here. But if I don't feel the vibration, I guess it might be a little inconclusive, so we'll just have to see. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead and remove the drive axles from both sides. We'll do this test one last time. If the vibration is there, can't be the drive axles because there aren't any. Um, it would have to be the clutch then. Possibly also an engine mount um, would be uh, a suspect as well, um, especially with a clutch replaced uh, an engine mount. The only trouble is an engine mount with a specific RPM only. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Seems more like a balance issue with a, a spinning device. But anyway, let's go ahead and see what happens when we remove the axle shafts and try this test, and then we'll make some decisions where we'll go from there. Now, one of the things, if you actually have turned a bolt before and are not just making diagnoses because you read the Haynes manual cover to cover without ever turning a bolt, um, you would know that removing the axle shaft would be a problem because on a typical model, if you pop the axle free from the transmission, you're gonna leak transmission fluid all over the place while you're trying to drive it. So the reason that I'm doing this strategy on this particular model is because it actually has a hub where the axle bolts to the hub. So this allows me to drive the car without the transaxle, without flinging transmission fluid everywhere. On a car that does not have this design, I'm not quite sure how you would do this, but it is because of the design of this car that I am able to use this strategy. So all I've got to do is uh, remove my axle shaft by removing the bolts there, and then we'll go ahead and see what happens. And then just one other tip uh, on this particular model, I find the easiest way to remove the axle shaft. Um, you have to, of course, um, get this hub freed up. So removing the steering linkage right there, and then also um, the hub connects into this lower control arm. It actually, uh, there are on the bottom here, three, uh, I believe they're 12 millimeter bolts or 13 millimeter bolts, I take it back. And what happens is this part here uh, actually slides in to the lower control arm and then once you get that slid in let's give you a view up at the top here all right here's a better view and then once this um, lower control arm once that slides in place like that then there is a retainer right here that you'll, uh, oops, it's backwards. Just a little retainer clip that slides over and that's what holds the bolts in. So it's a pretty simple design and that way you don't have to mess with removing the shock absorber or anything like that. All right, we'll give this one last try. And what I've done is I've put a glass of water on the steering column as a vibration detector. I wish I had thought of this earlier. Never forget when you're a genius. 
but uh, I did. So we'll do the Jurassic Park method here and see how that works. Let's see if we can get that vibration again. Uh, I definitely am not impressed with my water. There's 38 right there. And it doesn't look like the water is responding as well as I had hoped, but I definitely have the vibration. I can actually even hear it. And then let's push the clutch in and it goes away, clutch in. And that vibration was just from activating the clutch at a high RPM. But I can definitely feel a little buzzing. Doesn't seem to be showing in the water maybe as much as I had hoped. Try it again. Oh yeah, it's definitely still an issue. I don't know if you can hear it, but you can actually hear it right at 3800. And then anything lower or anything higher, it's fine. But right there, you can, I guess you probably can't hear it on the microphone, but anyway, there are no axles on this car, so I am safely convinced the axles are not the problem. Well, this is definitely much better at detecting dinosaurs than it is driveline vibrations. But whatever the case is, we have ruled out that axles are the issue because there was vibration even with the axles out of the car. So that takes care of that. Now that does not necessarily mean that the clutch is the issue, but again, the problem happened after clutch and axle replacement. I'm kind of suspecting something with the clutch. Not quite sure where we're gonna go from here, but um, maybe we'll follow up and uh, let you know what it turned out to be if I get to dig in later or if uh, the shop does a repair or something like that. But the point of this video was to show to do the diagnosis to see if the axles were the problem. In this case, they were not. That is not to say that driveline vibrations are not often caused by the axles. I am quite sure that they are. But in this event, buying new axles would have been a waste of $500. And that is the point of my whole channel. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful.